Okay, so this lecture is an introduction to the concept of stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is basically where we bring together the ideas from this unit that we've explored so far of counting by weighing with the idea of a balanced chemical equation explaining how we have to satisfy atom balance for any chemical reaction. And so what happens is we find that if we know the balanced chemical equation, then we can actually use that to make predictions about macroscopic amounts of stuff that we either need in order to make a chemical reaction go a certain number of times to produce a desired amount of stuff, or if we start from a certain amount of stuff, we can figure out how much of our product we're going to get. And as you can imagine, this is a very important topic for something like the chemical industry, where you might have a desired target. I need, I have a client who needs 68 tons of my, of my product, and I need to know how many railroad cars of my starting material I need to order from my supplier. And all of that boils down to the balanced chemical equations that govern the chemical process. They, you can actually predict how much stuff you're going to need based on the balanced chemical equation. So that's what stoichiometry is, and that's what we're going to get started with. Um, it's best, I think, to start with an example and then kind of work backwards to uh, explain all the concepts and how everything works. And so in this case, we are going to talk about the mass of oxygen that is required for complete combustion of 96.1 grams of propane. Propane is a hydrocarbon. We'll give you the chemical formula. And based on what we did in our last lecture, you should be able to supply the rest of the information to write the first the unbalanced chemical equation for the combustion of propane and then balance it with the correct coefficient. So pause the video now, try that on your own. I really recommend that you follow these pause points and try this stuff on your own. It will help you learn the material a lot more effectively the first time through. Otherwise, you're just going to have to come back and rewatch this video later on when you're trying to work properly. Okay, so we start with the unbalanced equation, which you should know is that you're going to combine your hydrocarbon with oxygen, and you're going to, your products are going to be water and CO2, right? These are the separated oxides of the hydrogen and the carbon that started out in your hydrocarbon. And balancing this is a straightforward process, right? We have three carbon atoms over here. We need three CO2 molecules to balance those three carbon atoms. We have eight hydrogen atoms. There's two hydrogen atoms in each water, so we need four of those to balance the eight hydrogen atoms. And now it's just a matter of adding things up. We have six, three times two is six, plus four is 10 oxygen atoms on the right-hand side, and that means we're gonna need five O2s to get 10 oxygen atoms on uh, the reactant side in order to fully balance it. So this is our balanced chemical equation. Now, how do we use this in order to figure out the answer to a question like the one that was posed. Well, what we need to recognize is that this gives us quantitative information about numbers of molecules, okay? So in other words, if I had one propane molecule, it would require five oxygen molecules to do this reaction, to completely burn it. And in the process, we would make four water molecules and three carbon dioxide molecules. And since, as we've emphasized here, number ratios and mole ratios work exactly the same way, that means I can just replace the, the, the word molecule with the word mole, and it's still correct. If I have one mole of propane, still counting, it's still just a number, but it's a bigger number, right? It's an Avogadro's number. So if I have a mole of propane, it takes five moles of oxygen to get that burned completely, and that will give us four moles of water and three moles of CO2. And again, I want you to pause the video and make sure you can figure out how many moles of oxygen are needed and how many moles of water and CO2 are going to be produced when you need to completely combust a half of a mole of propane. Okay, so hopefully that gets the point across about how to use the balanced chemical equation. We're working in number land, right? We're counting molecules, okay? So we need to get in there by counting, doing our, our counting by weighing, and that's something that we're gonna have to deal with. But the first thing I wanna introduce is the reaction turnover. The thing that we've sort of been counting up when we've been doing this is the number of times that we can do the reaction, right? I pose this question. If I have one molecule of propane, 
I need to do the reaction one time. In order to do it one time, I need five molecules of oxygen, four, and I get four molecules of water and three molecules of carbon dioxide as my products. That's the turnover. I need to turn over the reaction one time for every molecule of propane I have. So if I have a mole of propane, I need to turn the reaction over an Avogadro's number of times, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I need to turn it over a mole of times. We're counting things in exactly the same way that we count molecules. We can count events, like doing the reaction. And the reason that I choose to teach it this way is because it ties everything together. It, 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 it sort of focuses on the importance of the balanced chemical equation, and it ties all of these quantities together. So reaction turnover is the number of times a reaction can be done starting with a given amount of stuff. Okay? So what we need to do is we need to make a turnover table. And the idea here is that we are going to keep track of the moles of each component of the reaction and the number of times that we turn over the reaction in the way that we just described. Okay, and those two things, this is sort of the number world, right? We're working with molecules here, so we're counting. We need to get into that somehow. And the way we get in, I call it jumping in. We need to jump into our turnover table by calculating the moles of something that we were given. Typically, you're going to be given a mass of one of these things. In this case, we were given 96.1 grams of propane. And so now you should pause the video and figure out how many moles of propane that is on your own. Okay. So as we've already covered in this unit, if we have a mass of something, we need to convert it to moles by multiplying by the reciprocal of the molar mass. In this case, you can add up the atomic masses in this formula, that's three carbons and eight hydrogens, and you'll find that that's equal to 44.10 grams per mole. And so when I execute this equation, I get 2.18 moles. Okay, so that's the moles that helps me to jump into this table. And once I do that, I can figure out how many times I'm going to be able to turn this reaction over. Okay, so pause the video and see if you can figure out how many times or how many moles of times we would be able to turn this reaction over if I'm starting with 2.18 moles of propane. All right, were you able to get that it's 2.18 moles of times, right? You would be able to answer the question, how many times would I have to turn over the reaction to get rid of one mole of propane, to completely burn one mole of propane, you would say, well, it's one mole of times, right? So in this case, I start with 2.18 moles of propane, so I need to turn it over 2.18 moles of times. Number ratios and mole ratios go hand in hand. And in this case, since our stoichiometric coefficient on this guy, the coefficient in the balanced chemical equation is just one, that means that I'm going to need to turn the reaction over once for each molecule I have, and so I just have a one-to-one -one ratio here. But once I know that turnover number, that doesn't change, right? I know that I turned it over 2.18 moles of times, so now all that remains in order to answer the question about oxygen that I was initially asked is I need to figure out how many moles of oxygen are required to do this reaction 2.18 moles of times. Again, Pause the video and see if you can figure this out on your own. It's not particularly tricky. <coughs> All right. So if in order to do the reaction once, I need five moles of uh, five molecules of oxygen, then in order to do the reaction 2.18 moles of times, I need five times 2.18 moles of oxygen, or 10.90 moles of oxygen. All right, and we're done, right? That's literally how, what we needed to figure out here. We needed to figure out, oh, well, we were asked for the mass of oxygen. I hope you guys see that once you know the moles of oxygen, it's a simple one-step process to get the mass of oxygen. And now we're jumping out 
of our turnover table and going back into the, the macroscopic world of measuring masses, right? So the idea here is that we're jumping into the turnover table where we're working with the microscopic world and we're counting things and keeping track of the mole ratios and the number ratios, okay? In order to get in there, we had to jump in by going from a mass measurement and converting it into moles. Then we can work within the table. Now we're gonna jump out and we're gonna convert our moles of oxygen back into a mass of oxygen. Pause the video and do this for yourself. It's worth challenging yourself to see what needs to be done. Did you come up with multiplying it by the molar mass of O2? I hope that you did because that's what it is. It's 10.90 moles of O2. And so that means each mole of O2 is gonna weigh 32.00 grams. So it's just a simple multiplication and we get the final answer, which is 349 grams of O2. Okay, so that's how the turnover table works to connect the balanced chemical equation and the, and the mole ratios that it expresses to the quantitative questions that we can ask about masses of, chemical, uh, of chemicals that we're putting in or getting out. So it, it works for any of these. For example, if, if I asked you to calculate the amount of carbon dioxide that's produced by the reaction we're talking about when we, when we completely burn 96.1 grams of propane, <coughs> right, 96.1 grams of propane, we would have to do this, pause the video and see if you can figure it out. We would have to do the reaction 2.18 moles of times, okay? And 2.18 moles of times, well, that's gonna produce three carbon dioxides for every time I do the reaction, so that's gonna be three times as much, or 6.54 moles of carbon dioxide. And so now I can calculate how much that is in terms of the mass by just jumping out again. I asked myself a different quantitative question about the reaction. How much, how, what mass of carbon dioxide do I produce? And so I can calculate that. <laughs> then it ends up being 288 grams of CO2. All right, so if you've been following along and, and this is starting to make sense to you, you can test that by seeing if you can figure out on your own how to do this for the water, the last remaining part. All right, so pause the video again and see if you can work that out for yourself. Okay, so we know that the turnover number can't change, right? If we're turning the, the, the reaction over 2.18 moles of times, this has to be 2.18 moles as well. And that means we're gonna produce four, four water molecules for every time we turn it over. And that means it's gonna be four times 2.18 or 8.72 moles of water. And then now we jump out again into <clears throat> mass world or macroscopic world. Multiply this by the molar mass of water, 18.02 grams per mole and that gives us 158 grams of water. All right, so this is how we do stoichiometry problems. Notice that, that, that once we had one quantity, all we needed was to be given the 96.1 grams of propane and we could do this reaction. We could have done it and gotten exactly the same results if we'd been given any one of these other masses, if we had said how much propane is required to burn in order to produce 158 grams of water, we would have generated exactly the same turnover table, okay? Now, it's worth understanding the structure of turnover tables a little bit. Um, you should look and notice that the product of the turnover and the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation is always equal to the moles. So turnover 
times coefficient equals moles, right? Here's our 2.18, we multiply it by 5 to get that. 2.18, we multiply it by 4 to get that. 2.18, we multiply it by 3 to get that. That's always true. That's built into the way turnover tables work. <clears throat> so you should always, that's one way you can check and make sure your turnover table is correct, is that the turnover number times the coefficient should always be equal to the moles. All right, <clears throat> so let's review the general ideas behind turnover tables. There's three logical steps, and I break them down like this. The first step is mass to moles, right? This is the jumping in thing. We need to go for, do our counting by weighing to convert a mass that was measured in the lab into a number, moles. So we jump in by figuring out the moles of our starting compound. That's step one. After we do mass to moles, we do moles to moles. And here's where we actually use the turnover table to convert the moles of the starting compound to the moles of the desired compound using the balanced chemical equation, right? This is what we did up here. First for the oxygen, and then in turn for the carbon dioxide and the water. Each of those times, we figured out how many times we did the reaction. That's our turnover number. And then we converted that into moles of the desired compound. That's the moles to moles. And then the last thing is just to jump out in a moles to mass step where we get from the number realm where the turnover table works back into the laboratory where we're dealing with masses. Generally, that's going to be what you're asked about in this, at, at this point in the course is, is to calculate a mass. We need to jump out by converting the moles of our desired compound to a mass of the desired compound. Turnover tables work for any calculation involving moles. It doesn't matter how you get it. It's just that at this point in the course, the only way we're really dealing with moles is we are calculating them for masses using um, molar masses. Okay? All right. So that's it. That is the uh, way we do stoichiometry calculations. I'm going to post another short video detailing another example for more practice.